everyone, and welcome to another episode of D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for the evening. Um, we have spent three weeks, um, or three sessions now, this will be the third, painting this awesome uh, frost giant uh, from Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures uh, using Vallejo Game Color Paints. Uh, we're going to continue doing this. This should be the last session that we need for this one. It's a, it's a really big mini, and we want to take extra care uh, on it uh, just to make sure that we covered everything. So we're going to do that and then we'll be on to a new mini hopefully next week um, as we go. Just so you know uh, what you'll need is you will need a of course the Frost Giant from WizKids. Um, some Vallejo brushes we're using here a one, a two, and a zero um, primarily is what we're using as well as a Vallejo dry brush, a cup of water, and uh, some paper towels, as well as a palette. From there, looking at paints, there's a variety of paints. Actually, there's 20 in, in all. Uh, we've been using them every session here. Uh, but so you know, the most important ones here uh, for this session are some of the, the layer paints. We're not using the heavy paints as much uh, this session, and the snow effects, which we'll be adding to the base. We're also probably going to add some grass tufts to uh, the base as we go. So here we go. Here is the awesome, I switched the camera to the other side now, I gotta get used to that. But here is this amazing mini by um, WizKids here, uh, modeled after Harshnag uh, from Storm King's Thunder, actually. And uh, so I think what we've done here is we've done all of his armor here, we've done the skull on his head, we started kind of the, the metal band that goes around the nose of the skull, we finished the skin, um, and basically base coated and washed everything. So now taking a look at everything, I think we're going to start on the beard. Now for the beard, I want it to be like really white, um, even with a, a bit of a blue tinge. So we're going to go ahead and with Glacier Blue, we're going to start to dry brush that. And we're going to go right over this heavy blue gray kind of base coat. Let's do that. Give it a nice, nice shake. And again, we're on to Glacier Blue here. A little bit in your palette. Now, of course, with dry brushing, what you typically do is you want to load your brush up with paint and then you want to wipe as much as you can off of it onto your paper towel until all you basically have is a dry residue left on your brush. The reason you do this is because you want to make sure that you. Um, are basically just catching the uppermost detail on the miniature. Of course, we're live in the chat as well. I've got you right here, so if you guys have any thoughts or tips or tricks or anything that you've done yourself um, to, uh, on, on this mini or on a mini like it um, that you want to share, please definitely speak up. So with this one, um, I st I'm starting with a dry brush, but it's actually going to turn into more of an overbrush as I go. I'm kind of gauging how much I actually need on my brush in order to get it because I definitely want uh, it to be pretty bright in general. So the difference between an overbrush and a dry brush is with an overbrush you tend to leave a bit more paint on your brush when you're loading it. But you can already see that the beard is starting to lighten with that glacier blue. We're just going to work our way around the miniature here as we can. Hello, D. Clisser. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. You got to let me know. You have been here, I think, almost every week, every session, I think. Very excited to, to continue this mini. That's a pretty awesome mini. I've wanted to paint it for some time now, so I'm glad that I'm getting the chance to finally do it. Okay. Now, I want to be really careful um, along the nose here because I don't want to catch all that wonderful work we did on the face and the skin. I want to make sure that I'm a little careful here and that I'm not dry brushing the skin that we did last session. I've oh, got a little on the axe, that's okay. So we'll be dry brushing that in a bit. Okay, so that is the first kind of coat of Glacier Blue. Now, I think I want to put a like a blue wash on that um, just to make it kind of stick out a bit. We're going to try it anyways. And that's what we do here. We like to kind of like problem solve on the fly um, as we go. 
So we're going to switch out to a blue wash. Hello, Naroon. Welcome back. All right. Some blue wash. Grab some water. We're going to dilute that quite a bit, actually, because I do not want... Um, I don't want it too heavy. I'm just giving it a little bit of a blue tint. And let's see how that works. I'm going to try it kind of in the recess here. And I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it. So I'm going to go through, not too heavy handed with this wash. I'm just going to go through, especially around the edges, and add a bit of this glacier blue and the, sorry, the, the blue wash. Now with the glacier blue, looks like it's already dried because it was a dry brush. It wasn't too bad. It's coming out a little milky, which means that maybe it wasn't fully dr uh, dr dried, but that's okay. I did a bunch of yard work today, so my brain is a little fried. And then this will just give it a bit of a different tone. This blue wash will give it a bit of a different tone, tone than like all of the leather that is around it. Um, and all of those kind of earthy tones. It'll just make it pop really nicely. So that's exactly what it's doing. It's doing the trick that I wanted. Okay, so I'm just going to let that wash dry there in the recesses. Uh, and we're going to move on to another part. Jolly Tutorial Survivor says, so excited to get the frost giant on the table after this. Anybody else? <laughs> uh, I hope so. I hope you guys are all really excited. That'd be great. Awesome. Okay. So I think we'll go through. We're going to highlight kind of the leather armor parts um, with Plague Brown. So grabbing Plague Brown here, which is, I keep hitting the camera here with my hat. Uh, a little Plague Brown into uh, your palette. Now we're going to grab kind of a medium detail brush. That's my 03 that I have here. Vallejo brush, get some of the Plague Brown. We're going to dilute it a bit because again, we're going subtle highlights on this and building them as we go. And we'll see how heavy this is right now, but it should be okay. So basically what I'm going to do is just going to hit kind of those higher edges. It's a bit too bright for me. So I'm just going to dilute a little bit more. And as I dilute it, what it's going to do is it's going to make it less apparent. Basically, I'm hitting the top of this armor as if the light source was above him. Now, again, it's pretty intense, this color, but because we diluted it, as it dries, it won't appear as, as bright when it's done. We're just going to do that. We're hitting the top, and then I'm going to go onto this side. Again, diluting that plague brown, and then we're going to give it this side as well. Hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. It's a long weekend here in Canada. July 1st, Canada Day. Heading to a pool party tomorrow. It's been, the weather has been fantastic. This week it's supposed to rain a bit, but it's been a really nice weekend. Just hitting the top edges of all this, just to bring out those highlights a bit. Hit the full edge here. And you can see these sharp edges here. I'm using the side of my brush and basically just running it up along the side just to hit that kind of extreme highlight area. But that is done there, I think. Oh, I didn't do it here. So I'm going to just run the side of my brush along this as well to highlight that edge. That turned out all right. I think I, yeah, and I already highlighted the straps on his, I didn't do the straps in front, so we're just gonna hit these real quick. Some plague brown on the sides, like that. And I think that's it. I am gonna go in on kind of the padding that's in the back here and just hit the edges of that padding like this. 
Now, I don't know what Minnie will be doing next time after we're done him. If you guys have any thoughts or suggestions, we're looking at doing some of the new Wave 9 Minis at some point, which would be great. It's an awesome unboxing today on some of those Wave 9 Minis, and it is very exciting. We've got some new dragons coming out. We just did dragons, but are dragons something you guys want to want us to continue to do? Or do you want to see something a little different? I know there's a bullet in that in the Wave 9 release. You guys are really active in the chat here. Um, rainy weekend in Norway. That's too bad. Bythron says, I am waiting for my giant to come in. Guai here 2010 says, I followed your videos on the WizKids Beholder and turned out great. What mini is this? This is the Frost Giant from WizKids. Of course, we on this show, we paint all uh, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures, the D&D &D line. And I'm glad you guys uh, checked out our, my Beholder one. So if you guys uh, want to see any of the one uh, episodes that we've done so far, or some of our other tutorials, including the Albert and... and um, Beholder, you can head to our uh, YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Realmsmith and all of the VODs from this show as well as um, other tutorials that we have and our live streams. We have live streams as well. We play on Mondays. Tomorrow night we don't have a live stream um, because it's a holiday here. But All right. So I think that is all of the leather bits that we are going to, to highlight. I don't think I want to do any more than that. I don't want to go crazy on them just yet. Um, I am going to paint all these metal rings though, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back in and any metal areas that we missed, I'm gonna fill in here. Um, so I'm gonna to go to a bit of a larger brush just so I can get it done faster. This is a zero brush from uh, the P54 zero brush. From Vallejo, um, we are going to grab gunmetal, give it a good shake, again add some to the palette, and how is that wash coming along, is that wash drying? It is. We are not far from being able to, we're going to put some glacier blue back on that beard again after this. So. We're going to go through and we're just going to base coat all these rings we haven't done yet. And I didn't want to do them before because I thought they'd get a little lost in all the kind of the detail and the paint that we had to add on top of it. So just going to go in, make sure you hit the inside of these rings too. Again, it's a 3D model, so you want to make sure you hit all the angles. get really quiet when I'm doing detail work and then I forget I'm hosting a show. Gunmetal here, some gunmetal on this one, there's another little ring here like that. Now I haven't quite decided what color um, I want to paint the edge of his armor here. So I kind of got to decide that. All this Cool edging all along there. Maybe I do it like metal. Maybe that would be cool. I never thought of that. I mean, the idea for me is that there's plates under here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these plates. But the idea is that his, his plate mail, which according to lore, Harshneg wears plate, full plate. And so my idea is, is that, you know, his plate is covered in hide like leather because obviously metal would get really cold against the skin. And even though he's a frost giant, nobody wants cold metal against your skin in the north of the Sword Coast. So I'm going to go, I'm going ahead and I am base coating all of the edges of this armor in this gun metal to make it look like there are plates in between, but maybe there's leather, leather on top and under as well. I think that's what I want to do on these. 
And then we'll probably end up adding a wash to that. And I turn my mini all kinds of different angles. So overbrush there. Nice thing about making a mistake and noticing it right away is you can actually go in with a clean brush and then just wipe it away. Whisk it. Sometimes you may have to add a little bit of water to that. I had a question here pop up. Jason, you, you said you guys made a remorse tutorial. Will you stream that one? Ah, yes. We did actually create a remorse tutorial. We filmed it. We actually haven't posted it. So maybe remorse is one that will come up soon. That's been, there's been a request a couple times for that one. So maybe we'll do that one next. Um, or maybe I'll just post the one that we did. Just takes editing time. And editing is not a quick process for those of you that edit video or have experience in that or run your own channels. They are time consuming. If you guys are watching on the D&D Twitch, make sure that you follow and they'll let you know anytime that they go live, including our show. They have awesome content all week long, and we're honored to be a part of that content. And um, head over to, uh, if you're not watching on our channel, head over to uh, Realmsmith, uh, sorry, um, twitch.tv slash Realmsmith. And that's where our channel is with all of the tutorials and live streams that we have on, on a weekly basis. You can follow us there. And again, on our YouTube, it's youtube.com slash Realmsmith. As well, the VODs are actually being uploaded to the official D&D &D YouTube as well, which again is an honor that they do that for us and for you guys to kind of catch up. So, Again, just base coating all of these kind of edges of the armor as if plates are in between like that. Some messy parts here but that's okay because what we'll do is we'll give it a wash and that'll clean that right up i don't have to worry about that too much um i am trying to decide what to do with this rope area in hmm and i could do like a I could do it metal that could be kind of cool almost like a silver ropey area i am going to just do the plate on the side see how that starts to look but you'd think plate mail would have as much metal as possible to provide as much protection while he's fighting other frost giants and dragons i'm running a um storm king center campaign right now in uh for our live streams and uh last week uh they fought they're in Storm King's Thunder. So spoiler warning for Storm King's Thunder. If you're running it or your DM, sorry, if your DM's running it and you don't want to hear anything, just cover your ears for like two seconds. But um, our Storm King's Thunder campaign, they were, they fought or they're, they're literally, I think we're in the last session, maybe one more session uh, before we finish that whole campaign. And so they're hunting down Imrith in the desert right now. Um, and Harshneg was a part of that campaign, but unfortunately saw, although the, the last time the adventurers saw him, he was left for dead at the eye of the Allfather at the hands of Imrith. So. All right, so that looks pretty good there. You know what, I am gonna do it metal. Yeah, I mean, I've already started, so might as well finish it that way, but. Now, to get in the in the kind of the creases here of this rope area, I am moving with the grain, not against it, with it, so that I get all the deep recesses of it. And so whatever color you use for that kind of rope border, rope textured border, you want to make sure that you get right in there. My hat just keeps clipping this camera. I apologize for that but I figured you guys could see what was going on if I use this camera better. If you do have a question, make sure that you write question ahead of time of your comment, and then um, you guys will, then I'll be able to see it a bit better. 
while I'm painting here. And if I miss your question and I don't answer it, please just write it again a little later, just so I catch them all, or your comments or anything like that. Even if you have a comment, write a comment ahead of time if it's something you'd like me to share with people. All right, so almost done this, going around the entire mini. I think I'm going to make these runes in his armor magical as well, I think. I think it's, I think he wears plus one plate, so um, being magical, I'd like to, I'd like to give it a little bit of a magical feel too. Later in the episode, we'll be adding some magic effects to his axe and maybe some, you know, object source lighting or OSL as people know it as um, cast kind of on his on his armor on his shoulders from his axe again lore tells us that Harshneg wields Gert's great axe which is a legendary magical item and it was gifted to him by the people of Waterdeep from what I understand For being a hero and fighting for the people against his own kind. Fun stuff. Okay. Bring some metal back into these buckles because we washed them and now they're a little subdued and I forgot to do this one before so I'm gonna go back and hit this one. This is my chance to use any gun, any air, metal areas that I forgot or missed last time I can go back and, and kind of cover. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so we're gonna let that metal dry. Let's take a look at this beard here. It is dry. I guess it's really warm in this room today. Um, actually, you know what, I missed under here some of this plate. That's the thing, is as you go around a mini, you realize, oh, I missed spots. Happens. Okay. All right. Again, some overbrush there in some areas, but nothing a little wash won't fix. Um, before I hit the beard again, I'm actually going to go through. No, I'm not yet. I'm not yet. We'll hit the beard again. So back to the beard, and again, the, good, the great thing about Vallejo Game Color, I find, is that it actually stays wet in the palette longer. Um, and so that glacier blue that we used at the beginning is still completely wet and usable in the palette, which is nice. So we're going to go ahead, load our brush again, wipe most out of it off, and then again, give it a bit of an overbrush with this glacier blue. And you can see already, it's a bit heavy-handed, but see already how it starts to pick up all the higher detail as I kind of overbrush, which is just a more saturated dry brush over this beard. Oh, that looks cool. You can see, and then it has a bit of a t different tone, like I said, from the other areas on the miniature. That was kind of the intention. Okay, we'll let that dry, and then we're going to hit that with dead white dry brush. And I'm also thinking I'll put some of the snow effect stuff, maybe in his beard, like it's crusted, and, and around his feet and his legs. That'd be cool, too. All right, I think I'm going to do the, um, the fur next. Now, eventually, I want to get up to Stonewall Gray on that fur, um, because I do want it to feel a little different than the other textures on his, bo on his body including the skull and the leather armor. So I want it to feel like there's multiple kind of levels to it all. Um, so I am going to use Stonewall Gray. It might be too much offhand or right off the, the bat. Um, we might have to go back to leather brown a little bit, but we'll try this real quick and just see how it goes. Little shortcuts in here and there. Again, dry brushing, wiping it off on the palette. D&D question, any plans on doing the griffin? I think it would be great to learn techniques for doing feathers. Uh, I did a griffin um, on our channel. You can check that out at, at our YouTube channel. Um, actually, this looks really nice. I think I like that. It kind of looks like dirty fur. 
Um, and uh, but I will be probably doing some cre some sort of winged creature um, with feathers in the future. I won't say what, but that's probably going to happen soon. So um, I would say just wait for that maybe on uh, on this channel, and we'll go through some feather techniques. Though I will put the griffin on the wish list for sure. We have so many minis to go through. It's very exciting. Okay, I did go through, unfortunately, and I caught, or is that old? I think that's old. I caught the bottom of that, but that's okay. But that looks good, I think. It's kind of, again, a different, different tone, different texture. It looks like just dirty fur that has been worn for a long time, which he would have. But that Stonewall Gray is really nice. It's got a bit of a, of a warm tone in it. It's got some browns and such, so just makes it kind of kind of nice there. Do the same on the other. And this fur, this te fur texture is so nice. Question, what type of wet palette do you use? I'm actually not using a wet palette. Um, I need to start using a wet palette. I, I do find that the Vallejo paints, um, like I said, stay wet in the palette longer than most paints. So that helps. Um, oh, I went into the glacier blue accidentally. But, uh, but I am going to start using a wet palette more. I have in the past. And when I have used it, I like it. But um, I saw just really great tutorials, simple, simple tutorials on how to create kind of your own wet palette. I think Uncle Adam on Tabletop Minions has a good one. Um, and that's the one I kind of I used to create mine before. You guys can check out his channel. He actually painted with us at Origins. We did um, 11 live painting tutorials at the Origins show. I don't know who was there and who wasn't, but um, those of you that joined us, thank you for joining us and hope you guys had a great time there. Um, but uh, Uncle Adam from Tabletop Minions actually uh, guest hosted a bunch of them and we live streamed those and those are uh, on all of our social pages. You guys can check those out. I really dig how this is turning out. And I don't even think I was going to add a wash and all this other stuff, but I don't even know if I'm going to do that. I kind of like how this is looking as is. I may, um, well, I will add like a highlight on this of like bleached bone or something kind of on the edges. But I really like how that looks. I'm cool with that. Okay, we're going to do the same. And that's nice. That's only that's basically like a, a two-tone paint job. I think it was heavy brown. Well, maybe three-tone because we used heavy brown for a base. And then we used a sepia wash to add some depth and some contrast and stuff. And now we're just using Stonewall Gray. And there we go. It looks like well-used fur, or well-worn fur, I should say. That's really nice. Look at that. Nice and easy. That was super easy. Any more fur on the mini? I don't think there is. I think that was it. Legs and arms. Okay, then we might as well finish off that fur. We're going to get some bone white. In the palette, it's a little lighter than the Stonewall Gray, a little bit of a lighter tone. And again, I still have Stonewall Gray in the brush, so we just want to dry the brush off. But it's okay if you mix a little bit because you are, we're doing a transition. And then with the bone white, I'm just going to hit the top here. A little too heavy. And kind of the outside here where most of the light would hit. And here what I'm basically doing is they're just giving multiple layers of, of highlights. And it should make it just a bit more interesting. You don't want to go as heavy as you did the Stonewall Gray because you want to make sure that that still shows through where it's supposed to. But I just, 
I think this adds a little depth. It makes it a bit more interesting. I'm just going to do a really light dry brush. And I'm not even doing it solid across the whole thing. I'm doing it in patches. So again, it looks a little bit like real fur. I think that works really nicely. So I'm on the shoulder here, and then on the shoulder up here. There we go. Perfect. That worked out. Nice. All right. That's done. Okay, so that is the bone white there. Um, I am wondering if we should use bone white on the beard or if we should use, I think we're going to use dead white. Or should we use some off white first? No, dead white it is. We're going to go, I haven't changed that in a while. I apologize, folks, I'm not keeping up with the color selections. We're moving so quickly through this. All right, so a little white, dead white on the palette. A lot of what we're doing right now is dry brushing. A lot of it is just, dry brushing is just such a great technique, especially on a miniature that has so much texture like this one does. Now we are gonna add this dead white fairly carefully. We're being a bit smarter about our placement. See, so where the hair kind of like curls up and has a peak, that's where we're hitting it with this dead white. We don't want to get it in the recesses. We don't want to get it where shadow would be cast. Just getting it kind of on the edges and I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm really happy with that. Where's everybody from? Where's everybody joining us from tonight? And hopefully, hopefully you guys have caught up over the last couple of weeks and are now painting with us live. That'd be great. Is anyone actually, that's a good question. Is anyone painting with us live at the moment? That'd be really cool to know. I'm going to go ahead and add a wash to uh, those, those metal areas we had done in gunmetal before. Shake up this black wash. Now this black wash, I am going to dilute it just a touch. And we are just going to add it to all of the areas that we just base coated with that gunmetal. Now I'm being a little heavy handed around the edges just because again, when it seeps into those recesses, it's going to add a bit of delineation there. Now we don't want too much because we don't want it to uh, obscure detail, but we do want it to cover up some of that overbrushing that we did, unfortunately. It'll, it'll dim it down, like right in here and up through here. And it'll just add some delineation and really make that detail pop. And then we go back and we're gonna dry brush it. And that'll really bring it all together. Looking good, looking good. And washes, I tell you, they just do so many, so many cool things. They just really work. I am gonna add a wash to the strip on the nose, which I haven't done yet. The metal strip, and that'll just bring out that detail again on that area. A bit more in there. Okay, I think I got it all.
pretty sure. Okay. So once that, uh, once that wash is dry, then we'll go ahead and we'll dry brush silver onto those middle areas in the, in the edges just to kind of give, again, some, some highlights to that. I think I'm going to dry brush his, his uh, belt a little bit. We had used heavy blue-gray as a base coat. You know what? I don't even need to do that because Stonewall Gray is still in the palette. So we'll get some Stonewall Gray. And with a bit of a dry brush slash overbrush, I'm just going to hit the edges of this, of his belt. Again, probably be a lot more detail here. Just hitting the edge of it here like that. Darker around the back. And maybe hitting some highlights in here. Like that. Make it look a little weathered. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Great. I didn't paint the little ropes on his boots, so I'll do that next. Um, we're going to use a little leather brown for that. I haven't used leather brown yet today, I don't think. Being careful again not to ruin all the awesome work we've done thus far on the... Um, on the boots, I just want to be really careful not to go too far and get it on the, the boot area. It's doing nice, and if you've diluted your paint enough, you should just be able to do a straight line all the way down. Again, with detail work like this, I'm placing my pinky finger, my ring finger, right on the base of the miniature while I paint these ropes. And that'll just make my hand a little bit more steady and allow me to do that detail work without mucking it up. And then when this dries, we'll add a sepia wash to it and that'll probably be it for that. Kind of hard to get to and hard to see in here. I got it. There we go. Those are done. That wash is still drying. I'm going to whisk up some of that black wash because it, it's pooling here. Again, we don't want it to pool too much. He is really coming along here really nicely. I think I'm going to actually base coat his base now real quick because we're going to have to wash that base and I'd like to actually get some base work done because it's all about that base. Dad jokes on a Sunday. I save all my best ones for Sunday for you folks. Just so you know. Question, how many hours a week do you paint minis? Oh, Naroon. That is a great question. Um, how many hours a week? Geez, so at least two hours on Sunday. Another four, maybe seven hours a week? Maybe more? At Origins, it was like Two, four, six, like five or six hours a day, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, I paint quite a bit. Uh, sometimes it's, it's it's a lot more than others. Sometimes I'm I'm really at it in a week, in a given week. Um, I do not need that. I need heavy blue gray. Well, I already put some on my palette. I'm going nuts. I'm not going to dilute this much because we're going over the ba the um, the uh, primer layer here so we want it to be fairly thick again we don't want it to obscure detail but I definitely want to give it enough so that we have a solid solid base coat to work through 
So just working around the base here. This is just a lot of heavy lifting. I'm not too worried. I'm using one of the larger brushes that are kind of, it's kind of a little wrecked at this point. I use it also as my dry brush. But of course, when I get to the, the feet and kind of around the detail, we want to make sure that we're a little bit more careful. What I do here too is you've done all this wonderful work on the feet. You don't want to mess that up. So what I do is I place the paint on the, on the base and then I slide it into where I want to go. Instead of trying to jam it directly in, I kind of ease into it. And then uh, that allows me to kind of be a bit more careful around those details so I'm not messing them up. We are going to cover some of this base with with snow, so not too too worried about it, but I mean we could have just painted this base like snow. It kind of looks like snow already. But that Vallejo snow effect, environment effect stuff is really cool. I wanted to show all that off to you guys. Yeah, I want to say, I, you know what, I probably paint a lot more in a week because I also, I, I don't do a lot of my own painting time. Like everything is content when you're um, a YouTuber and all that kind of stuff and you run a company that's about, you know, content and, and creating content, especially around painting. Um, but, you know, it's it's really hard to, it's really hard to record everything I do. And some of it is just therapeutic for me. So, um I also, what I do enjoy doing, um, is, and, I'm, and I'm trying to get through it, is we have a, a monthly adventure box, which I've talked about before, and you can, you, the link is actually right here, right now. But in our monthly adventure box, we have minis and paints that we ship to people, and we have a stream, it's our noob stream, but it's called Tales from the Shattered Shield, and we walk them through our, uh, we're walking them through our adventure, they're playing through it, the one that is found in the monthly box, and so... I have minis that appear in that box that um, I need to paint for each session. So that's kind of my my me time. But yeah, it's got to be 10 to 12 hours a week, maybe. I'm not sure. This last week is a lot. And leading up to Origins was a lot as well. Painting minis for our booth and such. And our display. Okay. There we go. Base is painted heavy blue gray. It is base coated. Um, I was gonna maybe make these runes on his on his bracers magical as well. I mean, why not? I think we're doing okay for time. I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start to base coat the magical kind of rune areas so uh, i'm not going to do the, the 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 weapons yet but i think i'm going to go in and i'm going to do the ones on the armor i think so i'm going to go right to electric blue and what we're going to do is we're going to take electric blue and we're basically going to base coat the runes with that now i'm going to use a detail brush for that this is a 030 synthetic brush from Vallejo and being careful not to touch the base too much and all the other areas that I painted I am going to go in and I'm going to do all these runes in electric blue now basically I'm just base coating them I'm trying to get the edges but you definitely don't want to get this on the leather so you can see I'm resting my hand on the mini carefully so as to not I keep bumping the camera so as to not get it and mess up all that nice armor work we did in past sessions there And then I'm going to come around back as well. That isn't as neat as the front, but whatever. Uh, 
And then on this side, I'm actually using the edge of my brush to just catch the tops of these. And that's the thing about kind of like fine detail like this that is raised. You can use the edge and so you're not like jamming your, your brush into it. You're just catching the top edge of the detail like that. Okay. So that is that. Then we'll go, where else are we going to go with this? Um, we said the runes on his bracers, because again, it's plus one magical armor, so why not? Again, I'm using the edge of my brush to hit the tops of these. Also, in some cases, want the edge as well, because you don't want it to look like you're missing part of it. I want the whole rune to be glowing, not just the top facet. Okay. There, there. Okay, so that's all blue there. And I'll teach you guys how to do kind of the magical glow effect after this. And then on the other bracer. And then that great axe is also going to get some blue runes. There. You can tell I'm concentrating, I'm not talking. All right. So we've got the bracers, the armor. Is there anywhere else that has kind of those runes that we want to make magical other than the axe? Okay, his axe for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to paint the runes on his axe, this blue color, on the bottom and on the top. But I'm going to leave the the kind of metal rim around it. I'm going to leave that silver, the top and bottom rim. Just going to hit the runes. It's a lot of paint on that brush. Dilute the paint a little bit. Now, it's looking pretty flat and pretty boring here, almost like it's painted, but hopefully we get a little magic effect to it as we go here. And the magic, frankly, is in the reflected light sometimes. That's where the, that's where the effect really takes hold which we'll deal with after we're done kind of the core runes. There. Okay. So that's the bottom of the axe there. I wanted to do kind of the hilt as well as the... Now this will be fun. So this, we've got to be really careful. There's a lot of fine detail in here, and we definitely don't want to fill in the gaps between. I just want the edge. So I'm running my brush, as you can see, along the edge of the detail so it only picks up the runes in the middle, like that. And I don't want it to go in the recesses. So you're literally using the side of my brush, like that. The axe and then the axe on this side as well. I'll do the same thing. Now that was a little too much paint because you can see it kind of muddied up that area there, but that's that's okay. There we go. Okay.
Now that wash is done, so I'm going to get my, my dry brush again. I'm going to grab silver this time. Where is the silver? I'm still on leather brown. Sorry, guys. I am self-producing here, so it's hard to keep up with the colors. Give me some silver. And now I'm going to dry brush the armor. So I'm going to be careful again. Um, I just want to get the edges just to bring out that detail again and that contrast because the washes do, um, they tend to kind of like subdue the gloss of the, of the metals. Um, they will make them matte because the washes are matte. So I, I like to come back in with, with something like silver and then just highlight the areas, just the edges of all of this. I like kind of dark, gritty metal, especially chain mail that's been like greased and used and all that stuff. But this just helps to kind of give it some life. And this is your highlight phase for this metal. Hopefully just all the edges catch. I want to go through here and catch all of these. The problem with dry brushing too though is that those metal little, you get little metal flecks. So you want to be careful about how hard the pressure you're applying because you don't want little dust all over the mini. It's hard to, to not to, to get away from but okay I'm also going to dry brush the axe. It should be shining. So of course we used gum metal first, but now we're gonna dry brush this axe with some silver. And that should look awesome. That silver should be catching on all the edges. Especially the sharp edges. Want to make sure you catch those. The top. that and the smaller axe which is just a hand axe according to harsh snake's stats it's not magical which is why it does match so i'm assuming he got gert's great axe and then he went to maybe a shop in waterdeep and had a hand axe made went to a local blacksmith and there we go I think that's all the metal areas that I want to highlight. Mm. I guess I could do some of this. You definitely want to be careful with, with dry brushing metal after you've done a lot of work on a miniature. Okay, so now all of those blue runes are dry. So now we're going to take blue wash. We're going to dilute it a bit, and we are going to basically surround the electric blue areas with this blue wash. And what that'll do is that's going to give us a bit of a blue glow around the area, it, it, or at least it's the base of the glow. And it kind of puts us, it starts to kind of transform that area into not just painted runes, but it's casting a little bit of a dark of blue aura in that area. We're going to do uh, I went a little too bit far, far up, but you want to kind of get it on the runes and then a little bit outside too on areas that it would affect. So getting it on the shoulders there, again onto these bracers. I uh, want to paint it all into here. This, this blue wash is fairly dark, so again, we want to dilute it just a touch, but you can see how it's darkened kind of the area in there with blue. So I'm going to paint it onto here and into the recesses between these runes on this axe. Again, we don't want to muddy up that, those spots, so we don't want to fill it completely with the wash. But I'm also allowing it to kind of like bleed out onto other areas like the shaft of the axe and such. 
And again, that's going to just kind of give the rest around it a little bit of a blue glow cast from those rooms. We've got those, got the two in the back, bracers are done, and the axe is done. Um, I was going to do casted like blue light here, but I don't know if we would get a lot. I guess we would. Well, we'll, we'll save that for a bit later. Maybe I'll do a little along the, the top of the shoulder and the skull. Again, like you have certain plans of things that you want to do on a mini as you're painting and then or before you start and then you're like, well, actually maybe that wouldn't maybe that wouldn't happen. All right. Okay, looking decent, folks. Looking decent. Question, the magic effect recipe works on all colors? Uh yeah, I'd say so, Narun. I mean, um, you know, I would I, did, I take different approaches for different magical effects. Uh, sorry, while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... Um, we're going to, uh, if I find it here, take heavy sienna, and we're actually going to go around and edge all of the armor here now that we did before around the, around the chain mail. Um, I mean, yes and no. So... I always like to do a lighter color, then a wash for a magical effect, and then kind of dry brush around it. Um, and you'll see what we do here. But yeah, I would say that it, it pretty much works for, for, for most colors. You could probably use that same sort of approach for most. Um, we're going to get heavy sienna. Just a touch of water to dilute it. And I'm going to go along the bottom here. Oh, I got glacier blue on there look at that mess up again clean brush and i'm just going to whisk that away like that rub it with my finger and it's gone like it never happened <laughs> let's try that again there we go it's a little trick you use a an unused dry a brush to, as an eraser almost So again, I'm just using the heavy sienna because I imagine, you know, some people paint this part of the of the chainmail silver or metal, but I would imagine the chainmail wouldn't have any any kind of rigid metal at all along the edge, or it would kind of like sit like a, a circular um, wire um, kind of dress, you know, like the old school dresses around the bottom here. Uh, it wouldn't like form fit and move to hit uh, with this movement, so. I figure, you know what, it would probably more likely have kind of a leather trim around it to protect or keep the edges of the chain mill together and just finish it off nicely. So I've decided to use heavy sienna as a base for that. And I like how crisp it looks, so I may not even add a wash to it, depending on timing. And I like how it kind of stands out from the rest of what we've done. Kind of like that. Oh, put my finger in this. Messed it up. Happens a lot. And the base is also very dry, so we can move on to that as well after this. Just continuing around the mini, edging all of the chain mail areas that have like a, a trim in this heavy sienna. Is there anyone who's watching who is running Storm King's Thunder right now with their group at home and needs Frost Giant Minis. Man, my Frost Giant Minis got really good. My characters decided to go after the Jarl of the Frost Giants, so man, my Minis got 
a lot of use. The pre-painted WizKids. <laughs> pre-painted WizKids minis. Frost Giants. They're really cool. And there's so many different ones too. They're really nice. And I, I, we've been using the, the pre-painted Harshnag. Because I didn't have him in time. All right. But you can see how that just nicely finishes off the bottom of that chain mail. I almost wish kind of I made this the bone from the top. It looks like metal, but it could have maybe been bone. I don't know. But cool. And I think I'm just going to leave that like that. I may edge it with some tan. We'll see. Okay. So that is that. Back to, uh, no, I was going to say back to the magic, but, uh, but we really don't have that dry just yet. Well, let's dry on this bracer. So, okay. So now I'm going to go back in with my electric blue. And the wash has, you know, made it die down a little bit. So we're going to go back in and just bring it, it back out like that. Now, the key to a magical effect for me is that the surrounding area that it, that is, um, reflecting the magical light won't ever be as bright as the source itself unless it's like a mirror or something like that that will that will and i don't know if how that works or how light refracts properly but anyways in my mind in my limited understanding i wouldn't i would never make it as bright so the brightest point that we're going to have so i'm going to add some now this is detail work but i'm going to add some glacier blue now kind of in the middle in some of the larger areas of this, of the magic. So we're gonna add in here, we're just tracing around because I want it to be really bright in here, kind of like that. And so those will be the brightest areas. I am gonna use, um, Arctic white as kind of like the brightest point. That is a little, a little too heavy. Well, the problem is I didn't go back in with, I was wondering why those areas were so contrasty, but I realized I didn't go back in yet with uh, the electric blue. Let's do that first. Because then the glacier blue won't be as, as drastic. Again, going in with electric blue back over the runes. Kind of trying to stay in the center. And I imagine the, 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 the magic or the power resonates or originates from the center. So it's getting brighter um, the closer to the center of these objects. Okay, you can see that one is already dried. Go back into these and just start adding some. Now these are hard because they're so fine that I'm just adding basically points on them. I have also in the past used um, a dry brush for this kind of effect as well. And I will literally spray a color in an area to show kind of a um, 
a reflected kind of magical effect. Now this is pretty much dry, so I can come back in here again. Adding some of that electric blue. Focusing more in the center of areas if I can. The wash is still wet in the recesses, so I gotta be really careful not to mess that up. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some magic blue, and we're really going to dilute this. I'll put some magic blue, which we haven't used yet this session, on the palette. Really dilute this down, because we're going to use it almost like a wash a little bit. I don't know if that's enough, but we'll see. We'll try it on, you know what, I'm going to take his arm off. Ah, harsh neck. And I'm going to basically paint it around where, I have to wash it down even more, the reflected light would be. basically as close as I can to the rune. Kind of like that. I actually went too far, so I'm going to come back in with some gunmetal and bring out the edges a bit more again. went a little too wide on it. And this kind of effect may be a little trial and, trial and error for you folks as well. Because I know it is for me oftentimes. And sometimes I don't quite get the effect that I'm looking for. But I'm going to use a finer brush than this. Again, I'm just painting basically an outline around the runes with a very watered down magic blue. Yeah, this one's turning out better. I went a little too heavy handed and wide on that last one. There. That's the kind of the effect you're looking for. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now the issue with these bracers is, and there isn't a lot of um, reflected areas that we can add um, to really make it to really make that effect stand out. It works the best on areas like this, for example, where on the armor on the side we can actually add a little bit of reflected light, and then along the bottom of, for example, the skull, we can add some blue here, and all of a sudden you get the idea that it's glowing. Like that. So 
there. So you're getting now the reflected light from the magic. Water that down a touch more. Then what we'll do is we'll come back in with some electric blue and we're going to highlight that area. Smaller area, just the points, like that. When you put the magic blue on, you're like, oh my gosh, I've messed it up. But then when you add the electric blue, all of a sudden, it really pops. And I'm going to add some electric blue in to the glacier blue. And then paint that into some of the glyphs here. But again, you don't, you never want the reflected light to be brighter than the source. I have a feeling, I'm thinking that that even needs to be a bit more, that we need to push that magic blue even further out to give that effect. There. Okay. Again, the magic blue around here. And it's a bit of trial and error, like I said. If you don't get it your first time, that's all right. Even these, these runes are looking better than the ones I did on the bracers. You kind of figure it out as you go, but I'm adding a glaze is what I'm doing here. And hopefully you get the idea that they're magical. get some because it's metal it would reflect really really brightly there we go well, the bracers look all right I think But now I need to bring up the actual runes again. Because every time you have that wash, it subdues them a little. Again, mix that glacier blue in. And only that glacier blue kind of in the thicker areas. That worked, actually. Nice. It is helping to mix the glacier blue in with the with the electric blue, rather than going straight glacier blue like I was trying to the first time around. Okay, now this just looks like a mess you can see here, but when we go in and we add this 
the glacier blue with just a touch. No, sorry, electric blue with just a touch of glacier blue. And we're just going to highlight this. Then people will get the idea. And it starts to really carry that effect forward. Like that. You can see it's reflecting down to the, that area too. And you're just getting a really cool magical effect. I find like a vertigris kind of um, almost like a teal or like a color is really great for magical effects too. I wanted blue for this because of the icy frost giant magic, but there. And again, these runes should be really bright. That's what will give them the idea that this is magic at work here. On the bracers, the, the runes are a little thicker, so you can afford to go almost straight glacier blue in the, like I said, the thicker areas. Yeah, that looks cool. Sweet. Okay, that's done. Just I'm going to go a little straight glacier blue on this one again in the thicker areas here. really make these rooms look like they're glowing. Okay. Now to the great axe. Same thing. We're gonna, we're gonna bring these back out with some electric blue. You can already see, I accidentally put some electric blue on the edge here, but that's what we want to do. We want to hit that edge so it looks like that light is being cast onto the edge of the rest of the axe. You can see that, but... Electric blue back on the runes, especially in the center. Want them really to pop from that blue wash that we put on there. May have to do a couple thinner coats to build it up. Like that. And then we're also going to do that effect, that edge effect, on the top as well. Again, so that it looks like it's reflected blue light. Okay, electric blue back in here. Again, this, this is, you have to be really careful here because you don't want to get it in the recesses. You don't want to mess up the paint job up to this point. Just using the edge of your brush, bringing, oh, and I already did that side. Now mixing some of that electric blue with that glacier blue we 
we're going to go in and lighten up the thicker areas of these rooms. They're kind of like almost highlighting them basically, but they should be really popping out from the rest of it. Like that. Now almost pure glacier blue I'm hitting these with. And you can see how you're getting the magical kind of feel on that. You've got some reflected light top and bottom. I think we're also going to reflect some light on the bottom of his because it's held up like this. So um, he would have some reflected light on his bracer. So we're going to go in, grab some of this blue wash that is still wet in the palette. Water that down, and we're going to basically add the wash kind of in, in this area here, just so we're getting kind of the outskirts of where that blue would be. We'll let that dry for a second. I'm adding a little bit more to the axe because I think even though the facet is kind of around the corner, I think it would still cast blue. And it's just going to look cool. Like that. Okay, while well that's drying under there, um, we'll go ahead and Add some straight electric blue, basically to the edges around the axe where the reflected light is. So there, 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 and there. And we're just hitting, we're hitting the axe. Now this is metal, so maybe it reflects a little bit brighter than the rest. But you can see what I did there. I just added lines along the top edge of these edges and then it looks like oh we're getting object source light we're getting light from the magic in the blade cast down because it's hitting the edges or the ridges closest to that blade we're just adding little bits here and there to give it that idea of casted, casted light. I have more on this side actually, like that. Maybe even like on this side a little bit. Like that. Feather it out with my finger. Now we want to go really bright in these runes. This is going to be a lot of detail work. We're going to add a bunch of glacier blue here to make it nice and bright. We're going to basically trace out these little runes here using kind of the edge of the brush to really make these pop. Especially around the center of them, where it would be the brightest. See how I'm using the edge, but still allowing some of the electric blue to be kind of in the other areas, but 
I imagine that the magic on Gert's axe is actually in the center of the blade area. go and then put some of that really bright kind of electric blue down here as well and again it'll be in the kind of the thicker spots wider spots that would catch that really bright inner glow This is a little bent, that's okay. Okay, now I'm just gonna do one more highlight. Because it's metal, it would reflect that magic light a bit better. I actually have reflected magic blue light behind me on my arms, but you see the idea, right? Um, you can see, actually, that's a perfect point. You can see that it's darker blue around the edge, and then it gets lighter and lighter as it gets closer to the light source. So on the top here, I'm just gonna add a little line, just a very subtle line here. That was not subtle. <laughs> but I'm also going to do it along the top here. Again, so you get the idea. Oh, wait a second. It's glowing from inside. And all of these edges are catching that light. Just a little bit on this edge here, on this edge here. That. That's turning out quite nice. Half hour left here, folks. We're actually doing all right. I think we're actually going to finish the Frost Giant this session. Glad I took some time on it. I know you guys have been saying that in the chat too. It's a crazy mini and I wanted to make sure it got its due attention. Okay, so I think I'm okay with the magic effects that we have going on here. I think it kind of feels like in certain areas we've got some magic going on, reflected light. I do feel like those magic areas should be even brighter. So I think I'm going to do that on some of these. I think it'll make it look even, even better. Yeah, it does. They should be really bright. He is all magicked up. Okay, so let's go around the mini, make sure that we have all the parts done here. Oh, one thing we haven't done yet, we're gonna grab some sepia wash. We're gonna go back in and just add a wash to the ropes on his, on his shoes, on his moccasins. We're just gonna brush that wash over, let it rest in the recesses and so we get that texture in there diluted just a touch on this side so that that leather brown shows through in the highlights and then just in the in the recesses you got 
So that's good. So let me just go around this mini for a second. I don't know if you guys see, you can see from there, see if there's anything that I'm missing. We've done the beard, we've done the skin. Weapons are done. Casted magical effects are done. I do feel like Gert's great axe really needs some more, some brighter magical aura in the center of it. I don't feel like it's quite pronounced enough compared to the rest of the mini. So I'm going to add little dots where the magical areas meet basically. In the central areas where they be glowing the most. It's not quite bright enough for me. There, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Pure glacier white, or glacier blue, I should say. There, that's really coming on through. I'm just highlighting on the higher most areas and the, the wider areas. did say I was going to do some casted blue. I just don't know. You know, it would probably be around that area there. Just don't know if that's what I want to do at the moment. If that'll be too much, I don't know. Because again, you know, you have ideas of how you think things want to go, you want things to go on a mini, and then you get in there and you're like, oh, you know what, actually, Maybe I don't necessarily want to take that. <laughs> Maybe I necess don't necessarily want to take that chance just yet. Or, you know, it's good just the way it was, for example. All right, let's get on to the base. We've got 25 minutes left. Oh, I forgot to wash the base. Ah! Hopefully I have my, my fan. I don't know if I have it here anymore. But washes take a while to dry, so let's get that black wash going. Use a bigger brush, water down touch, and we're just gonna use a black wash on the base this will make all the texture kind of stick out. It's going to look like hard tundra rock is the idea here. He's traversing the tundra, and all we're trying to do is get some texture to show up and out of this area. There. Okay, <laughs> we're back to this because I don't have my fan. So we're back to the manly blowing on the base of the mini. I think my son took my, so I'm just gonna text him here and embarrass him in front of the internet. I'm sure he'll love that. So we used black wash 
for the base. I need to get much better at while I'm I need to get much better while I'm self-producing on how to actually uh, switch the colors so you guys know what we're using. We're getting better at it. We're working it out. It's all good. Let's get this wash dry. Now, once that wash is dry, I think at that point I'm going to add some, some grass tufts. So again, you can get grass tufts from any manufacturer, from a lot of manufacturers out there. Um, these ones here are really great because you can get multiple um, sizes and shapes and such. So what we're going to do is we're going to shake up, well this doesn't really shake up much, it's really thick. So this snow texture that we're going to use, um, it comes thick like a paste. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's a paste and we're going to use our dry brush um, because that's kind of our, our utility brush so we don't mind kind of messing up. And we're basically going to like chunk it on um, to the base around these grass tufts. I am going to try and use some crazy glue or some super glue um, to affix these tufts to the base. But while that's drying actually maybe we'll use some of this snow and we'll add it to kind of the fur and, and areas. Um, okay so as you can see the snow comes out really kind of thick and gloppy. It's very cool. And so I'm going to just attempt to kind of like add some to the bottom of his of his fur where you know it would catch. And oh, it's so cool. Basically it looks like and this is the Vallejo environment effects snow. They also have a big tub of it in their, in their diorama effects. Um, but you can see that his boots obviously would be just caked with snow as he's kind of running through. So we're just going to kind of, kind of liberally, but systematically, but make it still look randomly, add snow to the bottom of his boots. Okay, um, so we're adding it to the bottom of the boots. The fur area on the back here looks really cool. Of course, when that dries, it's going to dry really nice and make it look again like he's been trudging through the snow. For the last while. You can put it like around the bottom of the boot there. So cool. I think I want to add a little bit to the bottom of his beard. Like condensation has kind of caught here. Not too much, just subtly. Just a little bit. Like he's currently in the north tracking frost giants. And there's just snow kind of oh man I kind of mucked it up on the back here let's get it back build it back up here on his boot there now this day does take some time to dry so you can just kind of I'll set it aside when I'm done you definitely want to do this last but that looks super cool Um, and then, while we wait for, make sure that we close this up because that snow stuff does dry fairly easily. It is acrylic base, so we can just wash it off our brush like any other paint. Let that brush dry for a sec. I can go back to this because my son can't find my fan.
so excited about my fan. Bought it like two weeks ago. Son has to use it. Hey, Dad, where's the fan? Oh, it's down in the studio. No problem. Now, no fan. <laughs> to all you dads out there, I'm sure you understand. Okay, I am going to add some grass tufts as we go here. And then I will add some more snow on this boot on the inside because I think, man, that looks so cool on the outside. Jeez, don't want to drop them. All right, so grass tufts. I am going to grab, now I usually use, um, I usually use like tweezers for this, but I forgot to put them in the studio before. But I will add one right there. That looks cool. These come kind of self-adhesive, but um, usually it's not enough. So hopefully this super glue works. Here, just a little bit of super glue like that. Make sure not to glue my fingers to the base. Move it around a bit. There we go. Grass tough there. Arctic Tundra always has a little bit of kind of, my opinion, uh, my assumption is this is kind of like at the ed, at the base of the mountain. Whatever, it's a fantasy world. I'm not too worried about it. I just think the grass tufts would look really cool in this base. I don't need a geological reason for it, really, even though sometimes I feel I do. There. There's two. Looks really cool. Gonna add some more. True. Bythron says if you put it near the if I put the mini near the light, it will dry faster too. The issue is that these are LEDs. And so LED lights, so uh, unfortunately they don't put off the same amount of heat as incandescents do. But thank you, that is a that's a good point. Okay, well, that that wash is drying a lot faster than it has in the past in the studio. So, okay, so we've got our grass tufts down. They're down. The crazy glue seems to be doing the trick. We're just going to let that go, and we're going to start to add snow around the base here. We've got 15 minutes left. I think we can finish this guy off. Very excited right now. And I think I'm going to use a larger brush for this, for the snow effect here. Just put the brush right in there. I'm not going to be shy with this stuff. Here we go. And I want to add, leave areas that don't have it. But basically with the snow effects, you want to kind of stipple it on. You don't want to brush it on necessarily because then it just looks like smeared snow but if you stipple it it actually pulls the the snow up so that it looks like it's actually gathered snow and not kind of a paste so i am going to brush it on first and then i'm just going to move it around using a stippling technique like this in these areas So cool. I'm actually not even getting as much snow as I want on this thing right now. This brush is actually too big to go into the um, to go into the bottle. So I'm gonna wipe that off. And this this snow stuff is thick, so make sure you wash your your brushes really well, folks. Uh, I usually use like a, I usually use like a, um, an older brush or a brush that I don't necessarily use anymore for this sort of thing. Um, you can use like a, like a palette knife or like a, uh, a texture paint tool as well works well. But I'm basically just going to work my way around the mini, adding snow along the base. I want to keep some areas that look like 
Rocky Tundra. I'm running out of places to hold him, but that's okay. I'm also going to add some snow to the top. Look at that of the grass tufts. So it looks like snow is caught. How cool is that? If you can see that, the light's kind of blowing out the effect, but. You guys can see that or not, but it looks super cool from my angle. Now, if I wasn't kind of rushing, th and, and I'm getting a little bit on the edges of his of his knee pads and stuff, but that's okay. Like he would be getting snow on himself as he's trudging through the wilderness. So not an issue at all. You want it to look the way it should, or like he's actually, you know, I'm going to hold him from the body at this point. Um, you want to make it look like he's actually in the environment that you're trying to or that we're trying to kind of like suggest he's in. So it would catch on certain parts of his body as he's kind of moving through. Especially down here by his boots. Blending it in a bit here. Really looking nice. I'll make sure to post pictures of this guy. I haven't po posted pictures of the other ones yet because we haven't finished the bases on them. So as soon as the bases are done on those, I will post those too. There we go. I think I'm almost ready to call this one. If you guys have any suggestions for the next one after this, be sure to sound off now in the in the comments, and we will take all those considerations when we're putting a list together of the next minis to paint. We're looking at wave nine right now, but we're open to any suggestions at all. Anything you guys, anything you guys or you folks have at your table? Oh, that was weird. Anything that you have at your table that you're kind of looking forward to painting or you haven't touched yet that you want a little bit of guidance on or any of that stuff. And then also, once you've painted your own, folks, be sure to share these uh, on, our, on our socials. Um, you can check us out at facebook.com slash realmsmithtv. So we're, we're realmsmithtv at Instagram, Facebook, and a bunch of other platforms. Um, and so make sure, oh, our uh, overcam here has, has frozen on us. Oh, there we go. Um, but uh, make sure that you guys share them on our Facebook page uh, and all of that fun stuff and, and message us and show us your work. I would love to see what you guys come up with for these tutorials. Anyways, here we go. Snowy base. I think that's all I want to do on it. I'm pretty happy with it at this point. And let's just do a quick turn here of Harshnag. Three sessions later, six hours in all. And I mean, this is probably the most detail I would put into a mini. Um, I don't know if I'd go any more kind of crazy than this. Um, because again, Har well, Harshneg was a, was a mainstay in my uh, campaign, which is why for this, those of you running Storm King's Thunder, or those of you that kind of want a, a mainstay, you'd want to take a bit more time with Harshnag um, because he's going to be on the table quite a bit more than just your typical kind of frost giant or baddie or dragon. But this is kind of the level of detail that I would ever really put into a, um, into a, oh, I forgot the reflected light under here. 
you folks, to add that, just follow the same kind of approach that we did f for the reflected light on the runes on his armor. <sighs> okay, so last kind of turn here. Looking good. Gert's great axe is glowing. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I think he's doing all right. Sorry, the camera there is starting to glitch a little bit here, but I think you guys get the idea. If you're waiting to get your Frost Giant in the mail or looking to get the paints together, be sure to check out our VOD after the fact. It will be posted um, on the Realmsmith YouTube page. It'll be on the Twitch page for Realmsmith as well as on the official D&D YouTube page as well. Um, and you can kind of follow along on your own to paint your own little harsh nag um, whenever you're ready to go. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, make sure to make those in the videos, um, either in the VOD or now, um, and we can answer whatever questions that you guys have. Um, let's see what uh, question, what mini are you gonna paint next? Uh, yeah, we're trying to figure that out, Narun. Um, let's see. Have you done a fire giant? I am thinking about looking at the black dragon. I did do a fire giant, and it is online. We did it at Origins, um, and so you can catch that. I believe it's on our um, YouTube or Twitch, but I will find out where that fire giant is, and maybe next session I will let you guys know where that is. But we did paint a fire giant. It's a two-hour session. We painted him in two hours, and so you can check that out on one of those um, channels. Nurun says, looks awesome, Jason. Thank you very much. Um, it, have you done a fire giant? I'm thinking about looking at the black dragon. Black dragon as well by, by Thrawn. Um, that is also on our YouTube page. You can see the green, copper, black, and blue on our YouTube page. We did those already uh, for the young dragons from Nolzer's um, using Vallejo paints. So I want to thank again Vallejo uh, for all the paints and for uh, allowing us to feature them in our videos. WizKids for providing us this incredible mini and all the minis uh, every week and for D&D for partnering with us so that we can bring this awesome show to you guys on their official Twitch channel. Um, we love you guys uh, joining us every week. If you want to check out our monthly adventure box, we have an adventure box basically that we ship to you every week, every every month, sorry, every month is a new uh, module. And it starts off with the Shattered Shield, which is the first part of our six story adventure arc. It goes through six story, uh, th six arcs and you get a scented candle and minis and paints and paper craft and all that you need to run the module in the box. And then we add to that every time. And then we're launching our new adventure uh, soon, this month, coming in July. Not this month, but July. Um, and that is actually happening. Uh, we're very, very excited about that. And so those of you that have been tracking with us will get number seven after you get number six. And those new subscribers would. So you can check that out at www.realmsmith.tv for our monthly adventure box. Um, we don't have a live stream tomorrow night on Realmsmith. Uh, we will have one a week tomorrow, uh, Monday. Um, and I will be traveling uh, next week. So I can't tell you where yet, but stay tuned because we're very excited about it. Uh, it looks like I will be going west. So um, stay tuned. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, for you Canadians, happy Canada Day uh, as it is here. And we will ha I have a barbecue and pool party tomorrow, uh, and we, then, which is why we're not streaming and we're just enjoying time with family and all that kind of stuff. Again, post and share. Make sure you subscribe on our YouTube page and hit the little bell icon as well as follow us here on uh, the, the uh, sorry, the Realmsmith Twitch as well as the D&D Twitch. Hit that little follow button and you will be notified when we go live. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend and please post your pictures of your harsh nags. We would love to see them. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Take care.